our hymn this morning is hymn number 129129. Thank you. the English. I think we'll, let's let's start now and then we can. have mercy on us, Lord Jesus, our Savior, burdened with sin. We implore you, O great Redeemer, King of all creation. As we are sinners, we deserve your judgment. Jesus, be gracious. Hear our prayer of sorrow. Have mercy on us, Lord, Jesus our Savior. Burdened with sin, we implore you. Verse 2. Exalted Savior, cornerstone of heaven, Listen in kindness as we ask forgiveness. Send forth your spirit. Heal all your humble people. Sorry, I got mixed up there. (laughs) In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This morning's Holy Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Juan Valencia. For the repose of Juan Valencia. Dear brothers and sisters, the fifth week of Lent. Next week is Holy Week. We have just more than one week of the actual days of Lent before we enter into Holy Thursday. So let us now prepare ourselves by calling to mind our sins as we say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children, sanctified by penance, and in your kindness grant those you stir to a sense of devotion a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I've made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, 
trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery bagpipe, and all other musical instruments. Otherwise, you shall be instantly cast into the white hot furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you on this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white hot furnace and from your hands, O king, may he save us. But even if he will not, know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. King Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual. And he had some of his strongest army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the white hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast three men and bound them into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But he replied, I see four men, unfettered, unhurt, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. The book that I explained, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants who trusted in him. They, they disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own God. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom. Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon cherubim. Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Blessed are they who have <coughs> kept the word with a gracious, a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Glory and praise to you. <coughs> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? 
Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A sin, a slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. And so if the son frees you, then you will be truly free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. I tell you, whatever I have seen in, in my father's presence, then do what you have heard from the father. They answered and said to him, our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God, Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. Dear brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. So because we're in the last week before Holy Week, and we are preparing for the Passion Sunday. <clears throat> Sunday we will read and listen to the Passion according to St. Luke. So um, the readings today talk about things getting very hot for Jesus. The, the pressure, you know, he knows that he is in Jerusalem and they, he will be put to death. So the first reading brought us to another execution that didn't quite go the way the king intended. The, in, the, it happened in the time of the prophet Daniel. And prof, the prophet Daniel was when the Jewish people had been conquered by the big kingdom of Assyria, and they, uh, the city of Jerusalem was destroyed, and the uh, priests, the leaders of the people, the upper class, they were taken to uh, on a long walk across the desert. Not everybody made it. Some died along the way. On a long walk across the desert, and they uh, uh, lived in Babylon for something like 70 years, so more than a whole generation. So, um, uh, and, uh, and that is when this story happened. Now, um, have any of you ever seen your angel? No, you haven't. Don't raise your hand. Um, don't try and get away with that. Um, uh, angels don't have bodies the way we have bodies. So you have not seen an angel. We can't see angels. Um, I know that you've seen. But look, I took this picture. There was an angel. Uh, eyeballs roll up. No, you can't see an angel. They're not visible to human eyes. Um, uh, and yet, they're there. The angels are here. And what are angels? They are mighty guardians. They are powerful, uh, fierce guardians of us, and they protect us. So, in captivity with the king, the king, this is a difficult name, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar. Um, yeah, it's a hard name. Verdi wrote an opera about him, and Nebuchadnezzar was too long, so Verdi named the opera Nabucco. <laughs> Instead of Nebuchadnezzar, he shortened the whole name Nabucco. Anyway, um, but Nebuchadnezzar is the way the Bible says it. And there were three young Jewish men, and these three young men, they have their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the king wants them for himself. He wants them to give up their Jewish identity, uh, you know, to eat a Babylonian food, not Jewish food, to do Babylonian things, not Jewish things. And they refuse, and so he prepares to kill them. And how he's going to kill them is with a furnace, a big furnace. And he's going to make the furnace super hot, and he's going to put them inside the furnace and then they'll die. They'll probably die instantly. So they heat up the furnace, and then they heat it up seven more times, hotter than usual. 
And then they bind, the soldiers come and they put handcuffs and chains on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they're very brave. They know they're about to die. And then the de- the uh, Nebuchadnezzar, who in that opera they call him Nabucco, he, he, um, he, says, he says, look, I can see inside the furnace. Didn't we put three people in the furnace? And his servants say, yes, yes, we did. And here's the strange thing. He says, but I see four people in there. Um, I see four men. They're, they don't have chains on them. They're free, and they're walking around in the fire. And, um, and they say, oh, king, that can't be possible. He says, I see four men walking around, and the fourth one looks like a son of God. So we can't see angels, but this one somehow took the form of, uh, of a very powerful uh, guardian. And so um, the king uh, says, surely the God of the Israelites, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the religion of his parents and his ancestors, this is the God we should trust. And so he and his whole kingdom become uh, converted. Um, and that happens during the time of uh, the, the, um, the Babylonian exile. Uh, the, uh, later on, the Babylonians will be conquered and the, uh, the Persian king will free the people. They'll, and will, uh, Cyrus the Great will send them back to their kingdom. So many, so many historical things. And, uh, and so for Jesus, he's not thrown into a furnace but the people are preparing to kill him, and he knows that we, he will do that, that they will do that to him. And so um, that's why we hear this reading, preparing us for the passion of Jesus, which we will read in its complete form in the gospel according to St. Uh, Luke this coming Sunday, just a few days. So let us stand and let us pray. Let us ask for the eyes to behold the glory of God in all his works, we pray to the Lord. Let us ask for the spirit of faithfulness for those who are not free to gather together in Christian worship in many countries where there is oppression, we pray to the Lord. Let, let us ask God that through the example of our lives, others may come to know him, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention for this morning's Holy Mass, for the repose of the soul of Juan Valencia. We pray to the Lord. And of course, we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for all church leaders, all world leaders, and for an end to the war in Afghanistan, and as well as in other parts of the world where, there are, where people are being persecuted and attacked. We pray to the Lord. So let us enter into our hearts and ask God to hear our prayers, our special prayers that we mention to him in silence. We pray to the Lord. Father, be with us as we prepare for the festival of Holy Week. Listen to our prayers, those aloud and those mentioned in silence. Grant all we ask through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name and grant that they become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too thank you in, as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Especially at this Mass, we remember Juan Valencia. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So let us turn to one another and offer the sign of the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world. Mercy. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart, spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen.
Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our hearts and strengthen us with eternal protection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace.